Good morning. Welcome here to another Sunday morning with Paul and Angie Wagler from Arise Now. .ca. Yes, well, we are delighted to be with you here once again on a Sunday morning. We look forward to these times when we can spend together and uh, looking into God's Word together and uh, trust that it will be a time of encouragement for all of us. Yes, and we have been looking at Psalm 25. Yes, that's right. Uh, I've been on a journey there through these uh, wonderful verses. Uh, we've entitled the overall theme for this is Show Me Your Ways. Show Me Your Ways. Yeah, this is a theme throughout Psalm 25 is the whole idea of the calling out to God to, to teach us, to guide us, to show us uh, all of his ways. And, uh, and I trust that that's the, the cry of your heart. Uh, and the desire of your heart as we uh, as we walk through these verses together. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so today, uh, we well, we've gotten up until this point to verse 9, I believe. So yes. today we're going to look at verse 10. Yes. Yeah, so just a quick review. We're not going to review all the verses if you missed some of the previous you ones. You can go back. Yeah. You can go me. back. You can find them here on Facebook. You can find them on YouTube, Arise Now YouTube, uh, or on our website, arisenow.ca. Right. Uh, you can find the latest ones on the ho- the home page, but um, there is a tab that you can find. Find them some all of the there others. as well. Mm-hmm. So we encourage you to check them out if you missed some of the previous ones. But last week we looked at verse nine, which is He guides the humble in what is right and teaches them His ways. Mm-hmm. So we spend the whole show talking about um, uh, the, how what it means to be humble and uh mm-hmm. and how we can walk in that each and every day right and so you have it open there I uh, do. what is verse 10 verse 10 and we're going to look at first today all the ways of the lord are loving and faithful for those who keep the commands of his covenant right um does it say the commands or the demands demands yeah <laughs> Oops. I was like, let me reread oh, that. Yeah. Let me reread that. For the sake of, oh, sorry, I'm on uh, verse 10. Yeah. All the ways of the Lord are loving and faithful for those who keep the demands of his covenant. Right. Which are, which com- are commands, which are I commands. suppose. Yes. I was just like, okay, because, you know, there's, we have different uh, translations and then uh, we generally use the NIV, but even the, the NIV has updated uh, versions. Uh, so it has different wording. So that's why I just wanted to make sure yes. uh, what that was. Um, because I thought, well, we could maybe say commands. But so let's just ponder that. All of the ways of the Lord are loving and faithful uh, for those who keep the demands of his covenant. So if we're not um, you know, following the commands of the Lord, we're not going to really think of uh, his ways as being loving and faithful. Uh, because we don't want to follow them, right? We're going to think of them as being um, harsh, uh, harsh, demanding. Well, or just like, why would I want to do that? Then we might think of them as being dumb, like, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. like, uh, but it's interesting because that whole idea of the demands of his covenant, uh, that can seem kind of like a heavy. It can It can come across like, Oh, it's a heavy weight to bear. Mm-hmm. Uh, all of these commands that that were given in Scripture of things, of the ways that we should talk and the ways that we should act and the ways that we should think, right? Uh, the commands of Scripture, right? They can sometimes, um, maybe the enemy wants us to feel like, oh, they're burdensome. And uh, they become a heavy on us so that we feel like, oh, I can never keep all of that. So then we just give up. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Uh, that could be one of the ploys that the enemy uses, one of the tactics he uses to uh, frustrate us and to get us to just like turn away. Is like, oh, who can follow this God? You know, like we're just going to go our own way. Right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's interesting. And we want to look at this whole idea of the demands of his covenant and that all of the ways of the Lord are loving and faithful. And uh, to do that, we're going to look at a few verses in the New Testament. Okay. Uh, so maybe, Angie, um, if you want to look up 1 John 5, 3 and 4, um, I think this is a, a good passage to uh, put this in the proper perspective, the whole idea about his commands and the demands and, um, you know, the ways of the Lord being loving and faithful. 1 John 5. Five? Yeah, three and four. Three and four. 
This is love for God, to obey His commands, and His commands are not burdensome. For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Right. I'll maybe read that important. again. Yeah, read it again. This is love for God, to obey His commands, and His commands are not burdensome. For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Right, so in this passage, John is addressing this whole idea of the demands or, right. the, or, or, or all the commands, commands right? Mm -hmm. um, and he's saying this is love for God. This is evidence that we love God. We will obey his commands. Mm -hmm. And then he right away addresses the whole idea of this whole, this, the thing that it, this could be feel like a heavy. Right. And he says his commands are not burdensome. Right. Jesus said something like that. Yes, and that's yet another passage we want to just highlight is Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 to 30. Jesus said, come to me. I'll just, I'll just quote this one. Okay. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, burdened down, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, he says, and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. And then he goes on in verse 30, he says, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Mm -hmm. So the whole idea of the yoke comes from the, the, what was common in those days where oxen, a, a pair of oxen would be yoked together. Right, to do their work in the right? field. So if we were a pair of oxen, you know, gonna pull things, we'd uh, have this. Uh, how do they go? Well, I don't know, they're like a, like a they're like a big cow. Yeah, so maybe they moo. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, you don't have, <laughs> don't have to try to imitate that. But anyway, so if we're a pair of oxen and we're yoked together, there's something over us that we cannot... Both eat. of us. We, we, whichever way... Both of us. Yeah, well, there's something over both of us. You're right. That means if I want to go to the left, the only way I can go there is if you come with me. Right. Because I so can't go left and you can, and you go right. Right. We have to go together. We have to go together yeah, this, way. this way or, or the, this, this way, way, right? Because That's, we can't, we're so, we're, if we're, I want to yeah. go this way, I, I can't and, get away because. And, and we may think, think, well, that sounds horrible. It's like, I don't, I want to be free, right? I don't want to <laughs> be yoked with anybody. But Jesus is, is saying for my yoke is easy. And, and so this is the whole idea of that his commands are not burdensome. This is love for God, yeah. going back to First John 5, the, to obey his commands. And his, is, his commands are not burdensome. And then he, it's interesting in that Matthew 28, verse 30, he says, For my yoke is easy, which seems kind of like, how can that be possible? Like that a yoke is easy. And then he says, and my burden is light. Well, how... How can a burden be light? If it's light, it's not a burden. Right. I mean, that's the way we would think of it logically, right? Mm -hmm. But it's it's like Jesus is inviting us to come to him with the heaviness, right? He says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened down, and I will give you rest. I will give you and rest. And then verse 29, take my yoke on you, because the yoke is easy. We find mm -hmm. out in verse 30, take my yoke on you, and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. Yeah, learn my ways. Yes, yeah. This is this theme throughout all yeah. of Scripture, right? Yeah. We're highlighting a few of the passages. Uh, and so... Uh, one of the ways that the burden can be light is there's verses where it talks about where we're to cast our cares on him, for he cares for us. Right, that's in um, First Peter 5, I think, uh, maybe verse 7, possibly, somewhere around there. Yeah. Um, yeah, cast all your cares on me or on him because he cares for you yeah. is what it, what it says. And so... So this, we don't have to carry our load alone. Yeah. Jesus is with us. The whole, and he's the one who can lead us and guide us and we want to go his way. Yeah. And the whole yeah. key in all of this, Angie, is that, is, that, um, is that we live in this relationship with God as our loving Father, with Jesus as our Lord and Savior, and the Holy Spirit who they have sent to dwell within us. Mm -hmm. We live in that relationship each and every day. And it's that's the whole key in all of this. It's not a religion. 
It's not, uh, it's like we're, we're going to grit our teeth and try harder so in hopes that we can somehow please God. Mm -hmm. No, that is, that's religion, right? It's always this striving, this this thinking that we got to do better and we got to earn our way and we got to, uh, yesterday we failed, but tomorrow we're going to get it right and we're going to do it better. And, uh, and, and, you know, we do want to keep improving, right? But it's not, it's not, um, for the motive to gain acceptance and love from God. No, he has given us that. Like we talked um, two or three weeks ago, Angie, that whole idea uh, uh, from verse um, 8 where of Psalm 25, where it says, uh, good and upright is the Lord, therefore he instructs sinners in his ways, right? God didn't wait for us to make the first move towards him. He made a way for us as sinners to come and to be in relationship with him. And, and so that's the beauty of this relationship, right? God gives us the gift of grace, that which we don't deserve. He gives us salvation. He gives us a way to come and be in relationship with him through what Jesus has done, his death on the cross, where he, he was the perfect sacrifice for your sins and for mine, and so that we could receive this free gift of salvation. And now we live in this relationship with him each and every day. And as we do, the love that we have for God grows and we receive more and more of his love. We become, as it talks about in Ephesians chapter 3, uh, I think around verse 18 or 19, where it says, I pray that you being rooted and established in love, right? And so we become each and every day a little more rooted and established in the love that God has for us. And, and, and the end result of all of that is, is that we want to do what he commands us to do. Uh, this is love for God, 1 John 5, verse 3. This is love for God to obey his commands. And his yeah. commands are not burdensome. You know, because when you really love somebody, what do you want to do? You want to do everything that you can to please them. And to uh, to just, you know, like I'm thinking of you. Like I just want to do what, what I do you, can. What do you want to do for me? <laughs> I just want to <laughs> do what I can. To please you and I to, can name a few and, things that you do you, say, so, you know you, you'll load the dishwasher you'll yeah. uh, sweep the floors and and vacuum the floors and yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah Some we want to do things that please the other person yeah. right when we love someone right mm -hmm. and so that's that's the beauty of this whole thing that can seem like a heavy if we don't have the foundational aspect of the relationship and the love that God has for us and that we have for him uh, that has to be uh, at the heart of our journey, right? Yes. Because if it isn't, then the demands of his covenant seem like a burden mm -hmm. and they can seem like a heavy. Uh, and, uh, and so, yeah, so there's another verse, John 14, verse 15 and 16. This is uh, going to use the words of Jesus um, to highlight this as well. So remember, the yoke is easy, the burden is light, when we come to Jesus, and uh, then let's uh, see what he says in John 14, verse 15 and 16. Okay. If you love me, you will obey what I command, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever, the Spirit of Truth. Am I supposed to, that's starting 17 there. Yeah, but, it, but it basically the, high, the key thing in that is if you love me, you, you will, will obey, obey my, my commands, command. right? And mm -hmm. that's what we've just been talking about, right? right? You know, if I if I love someone, in this case referring to you, I'm going to want to want to do things that please you mm -hmm. and that benefit you and, and uh, that benefit our relationship, right? right. I'm not going to want to uh, uh, do something that, that hurts you, uh, you know, that whole idea, right? right. And, you know, we're not always going to get this stuff perfect, right? But that's the beauty of uh, of this relationship that we have with the Lord, right? We we're growing, and there's much grace. Uh, I love how it says in um, Hebrews chapter four, verse sixteen: "Let us come uh, with confidence to the throne of grace, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need." That's Hebrews four sixteen. So there's this throne of grace, right, yeah. that God sits on. And, and we can come with confidence there so that when we have messed up, we will be given mercy, right? And we come, like we talked about last week, with humility. We acknowledge and we confess where we have failed and we have, we have messed up. 
uh, and we have sinned, right? Where we have yeah. wanted and taken our own way. And then we can receive the mercy and then we find the grace, which grace is not only um, us being given what we don't deserve, but it's also a, a supernatural empowering that is given to us so that we can walk as followers of Jesus here on this earth so we can receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. And I'm just feeling like as, as we're speaking that, that there's some of you who are feeling like, wow, I am in a time of need right now. And so we just wanna, we just wanna spend a moment there and, and just pray for you, particu- uh, specifically for you who are feeling like uh, there's this n- big need that I'm having right now and I need some grace. I need some supernatural empowering. And so Angie, would you just say a prayer that would, uh, would, um, would just meet, that God would come and meet the, those people who are feeling like they're in that place right now in this time and in this place? Father, we thank you that we can approach your throne of grace in our time of need. And I just invite you just to lift up to him. Just mm. say it. You can say it out loud, say it in your mind, what it is that you need, what it is that you're facing right now where you need God's help. Just tell him right now. Father, you hear. You hear these cries. You hear these, um, these needs. And I thank you that you said we can approach your throne of grace in our time of need and that you will. Give us the grace that we need. You will help us. You will show us the way. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Yes. Amen. Amen. Well, we expect God to do amazing things in your life uh, as a result of you calling out to him to come and give you the grace that you need. And so, Angie, this is is the beauty of this relationship that we are in. That, uh, yes, there there are demands, the commands, the, the ways that we are supposed to walk uh, with with the Lord. I mean, we're you know he he uh, he gives us you know Jesus summed it all up in um, uh, I'm not sure the exact reference. It's somewhere in Luke um, where he says you know people are asking him which is the most important commandment, right? And he says uh, you know he sums it up as this: is love the Lord your God with, with all, all your, your heart, heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. And, and everything else hinges on those two things, right? Mm-hmm. But which is first? Love the Lord your God, right? Yes. And, and then out of that flows this love for, for, for others. For others, right. And, and so it all flows out of that, right? Mm-hmm. And so we want to respond in loving ways to people uh, around us each and every day. And, and it flows out of that loving, relationship, that loving relationship that we have with God. I think that might be... Um, Luke 22, uh, 34 to 36. I don't know if I got it right, but um, no, I think I'm too... That's the rooster crowing. No, maybe go back, uh, maybe Luke 19 or 18. Anyway, oh, I think it's Matthew, maybe Matthew. Anyway, it's, it's, it's in there. I don't know, I'm sorry, I don't have We're the exact all be reference. We're today. We could, uh, we'll... we'll We'll get that reference later. But, yes. Um, but anyway, that's that's what Jesus says that in in uh, the Gospels, both that it all comes down to those two things, right? right. And uh, so when we're feeling like there's oh, sometimes you know the enemy can come and make us feel like it's too much of a burden, right? You got to give, you want to give up, and uh, no, it's just, it's, Jesus made it simple. He didn't make it easy, but he made it simple. Mm. Love the Lord your God and love other people. And everything flows out of those two things. And his commands are not burdensome. Jesus says, if you love me, you will obey my commands. Now, the good thing, like I said, is that if we mess up, there is forgiveness. And let's go on to verse 11, Angie, um, in in Psalm 25, because that's going to talk a bit about forgiveness. Oh. (laughs) Oh, well, I'll I'll just say what it is. No, 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 I got it it right here. Oh, you got it? I got my... Your handy little bookmark. I just and went went to the other ribbon. Yeah. Uh, Okay. For the sake of your name, O Lord, forgive my iniquity, though it is great. Yeah. And so in this verse, uh, David is is doing what he did in the previous verse, where he is when we were talking about remember and forget, right? Mm Because in uh, verses um, 
uh, 6 and 7, he was telling the Lord, remember your great love and mercy are, that are from of old, but forget the sins of my youth Yes, and my rebellious ways. Right. And so, so here, once again, he is reminding the Lord about some things that he should remember. For the sake of your name, you know, you have this great name and it's been told, the stories have been told, you know, uh, across the the people groups, right? People yeah. knew You of, have a reputation <clears throat> to uphold. Right. And so for yeah. the sake of your name, forgive my iniquity, even though it is great. Mm -hmm. Yes, like you said, Angie, he has a reputation to uphold, right? And so we can remind him of that, right? For the sake of your name. But the part I want to highlight in this verse beyond that is that David says, uh, forgive my iniquity, uh, even though it is great. And uh, and so I want to just spend a, a few minutes pondering that phrase. Forgive my iniquity, even though it is great. And, and that is a really a humble response, a humble prayer to the Lord. Because it's, it's, it's coming with a realization of that we have sinned, and that we have sinned, and we have hurt, um, we've hurt God, and we've hurt others. Uh, and, and David, you know, in the cry of his heart in Psalm 51, where he's praying, um, you know, about the sin that he committed with Bathsheba and her husband and all of that stuff, which we won't get into that story today. Um, he is acknowledging the greatness of his sin there as well. And so here he's saying, forgive my sin or forgive my iniquity, which is, is his sin, even though it is great. And so I think that there's a, a whole thing in this that we want to highlight, and that is that we want to realize our own sinfulness, and we don't want to downplay that. Mm. Um, and so, you know, Angie, sometimes uh, I, I know I'm in conversations and, and people are we're talking about something that happened. You know, it could be some somebody's done some horrific thing, uh, a horrific crime, maybe, you know, whatever it is. It could be any number of things. And then, and then people might say this comment uh, that I've heard numerous times is like, how could anybody do that, right? And sometimes, you know, we can, we can think uh, when we hear of horrific things that have happened that somebody has done to somebody else, yeah. we can think that, like, how could anybody do that? Um, and, but in my heart, I always uh, feel some caution around that because I always... Uh, want to function with an awareness of the potential of my own sinfulness. So, so, so I like this phrase that I, you know, about, you know, any variety of things that have happened that other people have done. I like to remind myself regularly of this, and maybe you've heard this uh, phrase before, uh, and it goes simply like this, but for the grace of God, there go I. And so, so I realize that in my own heart, uh, there in my own being, there is potential for for evil. There is potential in all of us to do um, things that are not good, right? And and so when we see that in others, uh, I think it's good not to be like, oh, how could they do that? But it's to it's to be compassionate and to um, and to be loving in that realizing that they can be forgiven of that as well. Uh, but also realize, but for the grace of God, you know, we talked about that grace, the throne of grace, right, that we come to in our time of need uh, and that, that we can receive grace and mercy to help us, right? And, and so, but for the grace of God, without that in my life, who knows what I could have done, right? Mm -hmm. and, 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 and we want to realize that each and every day. And I think that serves as a protection and a, and a covering and a blessing even over our lives that can keep us walking in the ways of God. Right. That can keep us uh, obeying His commands. Right. And just last week we talked about humility, and that's part of humility, I believe, mm -hmm. is being reflective, um, and and having that soft place before God that we 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 want to come before Him. We want to recognize. We want to confess mm -hmm. uh, when we've sensitive enough to know when we've gotten it wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I found that verse because I picked up my own Bible and I knew where it was on the page. All right. <laughs> Matthew 22, 34 to 30 or to 40, uh, where Jesus is asked by the Sadducees and the Pharisees, or the Pharisees, um, 
Jesus said, silence the Sadducees. The Pharisees got together and asked him, which is the greatest commandment. So anyway, uh, but we want to turn to Luke 18. I'm going to turn there. Okay. And that's there's a verse there that connects with what we've been talking about, about but for the grace of God, there go I. Um, and this is a parable that Jesus tells. Uh, the title of it is The Parable of the Pharisee and the Tax Collector. Uh, you want, can I read this one? <laughs> <laughs> Sure. Okay. Well, you, sure. You, you, I was the one who brought it up before the before okay. well, the show. Why don't, but why hey, don't, it's that's a, okay. You, it's you several read verses. It. Why don't you turn there and and we'll we'll uh, I'll read the first few verses and you can read the last few verses. Okay. Luke eighteen nine to fourteen. And this is uh, speaks of this whole idea of what we're talking about that we want to be aware of our own sinfulness. So, like David says in this verse, for the sake of your name. Forgive my iniquity, even though it is great. He's acknowledging that his sin is great and that he has failed, uh, you know, miserably, right? Is, right? It would be another way to put it. So uh, this is a parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector. Verse 9 of Luke 18. To some who were confident of their own righteousness and looked down on everybody else. Isn't that kind of what we want to not be like? Prideful. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's this this whole thing of like, oh, how could anybody do this, right? right. Uh, but for the grace of God, there go I. So remember that. Jesus told this parable. Uh, two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood up and prayed about himself. God, I thank you that I am not like all other men, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and give a tenth of all I get. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I tell you that this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Yeah, and so that's um, kind of connecting with what we talked about last week about walking in humility. Uh, but it's being aware of our own sinfulness, and and um, and which I think then helps us be extend grace and mercy to other people as well. Yeah. And and you know we we've spent um, I think a few weeks ago we talked about the whole idea of extending forgiveness to other people, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's hard to extend forgiveness to other people if if we're um, if we're like the ones Jesus describes in verse nine, confident of their own righteousness and looking down on other people, right? right. Uh, so we want to walk in in a humility, walk in a in a gentle and with a gentle and humble spirit, so that um, we're aware of our own sinfulness, and that when others do wrong against us, we can extend the same grace and mercy to them that has been given to us. For the sake of your name, forgive my iniquity, even though it is great, mm. uh, is what David uh, prays in, in, the, in this verse in Psalm right. 25, 11. So Angie, I think we're gonna um, maybe leave it at that for today. And then the next week, we're gonna get on to verse 12 uh, and beyond, and that's uh, going to start another theme of uh, the fear of the Lord. Yes. Uh, and we're going to see um, what the Lord has to show us about that. Right, right. Well, thank you very much for joining us today. And come back again next week when we carry on. Yeah. And until we meet again. Stay awake. And stay alert.